Lectures from the Academy. The title of this podcast is Saving Face, and it is another lecture in a group of lectures selected from the many classes taught by Dr. Gregory T. Lawton to the students of the Blue Heron Academy of Healing Arts and Sciences from 1980 to 2022. Dr. Lawton founded the Blue Heron Academy in 1980. Since that year, Thousands of students have learned the practice of true traditional health care at the Academy and have gone on to establish practices serving the health care needs of their patients. Dr. Lawton is a licensed chiropractor, nepropath, and acupuncturist, as well as a certified naturopath. Welcome. My name is Chrissy Dawn, and for the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you a lecture from the Blue Heron Academy entitled Saving Face. Let's begin. Saving Face Why is it that doctors are paid so much and teachers are paid so little? Are they not both equally important? But consider this. Without teachers, there would be no doctors. Teachers are more important. Ella was a speech teacher at a local college and had health insurance through a health maintenance organization, or HMO. When Ella was diagnosed with an acoustic neuroma, she was grateful she had a good insurance plan through the school system. Or so she thought. An acoustic neuroma is a benign tumor that grows on the eighth cranial nerve, also known as the vestibular cochlear nerve. One part of this nerve transmits sound, and the other helps send proprioceptive signals and balance information from the inner ear to the brain. As you can see, it is an important nerve. When Ella was diagnosed with her tumor, there were only a handful of doctors who were competent in the needed surgery, and none of them belonged to her HMO. There was a great acoustic neuroma surgeon in Chicago. He pioneered the most advanced surgery for the condition. Ella's HMO refused to allow her to be treated by him, and Ella did not have the money to pay him privately. She did not have a choice. She would have to trust the HMO surgeon. The surgeon her HMO assigned to her case botched the surgery and damaged the facial nerve on the right side of Ella's face. The nerve damage caused permanent numbness and complete paralysis on the right side of her face. In addition, part of her tongue was paralyzed, and this college speech teacher had to go through many months of speech therapy to learn how to talk again. Ella, a beautiful woman, now looked like she had had a stroke, and she was unable to work. This is where Ella's story gets worse. Her husband announced he was leaving her and their young special needs daughter and was filing for divorce. In his mind, Ella due to her facial paralysis and inability to speak clearly, was no longer the woman he had married. When I met Ella, she was a single mom who had just completed months of speech therapy and had returned to her teaching position. She was visiting with me to see if there was anything I could do to help her with the muscles on the right side of her face. This is where I admit to you that one minute before she came to talk with me, I had no clue what to do, but moments after talking with her, I had an idea, and I knew exactly what to do. My education and training never prepared me for half of what walked into my office, but somehow I managed to come up with some way to help people. This was the case with Ella. Traditional manual therapy and mobilization techniques like massage therapy or spinal mobilization, are not effective in treating patients with severe nerve damage and paralysis. There are techniques and procedures that do work, but in Ella's case, the damaged nerve was beyond repair. In my clinic, I had a small electrotherapy device with probes that were ideal for delivering small amounts of current into the facial muscles for the purpose of nerve and muscle stimulation. I began to treat Ella with facial massage and electrotherapy to contract, exercise, and tighten the facial muscles on the affected side of her face. 
After every treatment session, Ella and I stood in front of a mirror to measure our progress. These electrotherapy devices are common, and you see them routinely in infomercials. But when I treated Ella, they were not commonly used for the purpose that I employed to treat Ella's condition. It was soon apparent that Ella and I were making significant progress in toning and tightening her paralyzed and flaccid facial muscles. The results were remarkable, and it delighted Ella to see the transformation. It greatly surprised me. Apparently, and this is according to the doctor that pioneered the original acoustic neuroma surgery, no one had thought to do this before for patients who experienced a failed surgery. Ella's HMO belatedly allowed her to consult with this surgeon, and Ella was invited to speak at an Acoustic Neuroma Association conference, where she told her story and talked about my approach to her treatment. My technique went on to become adopted as standard practice for patients like Ella. I, of course, not being a medical doctor or considered to be part of the medical profession, was not invited. After several weeks of electrotherapy, and while looking in the mirror together, we realized that the injured and paralyzed side of Ella's face now looked more youthful than the normal side. At this point in Ella's treatment, I suggested we get her insurance company to buy her an electrotherapy machine so she could treat herself at home. To our mutual surprise, the insurance company agreed. Due to our many sessions together, Ella was now empowered to care for and to treat herself, and I arranged for her to get an electrotherapy device like the one I used on her, paid for by her health insurance provider, so that she could continue with her own therapy at home. Ella would need facial muscle electrostimulation for the remainder of her life. One side effect that Ella and I noticed after about six weeks of therapy was that the affected, paralyzed side of her face began to look tighter and more youthful than the side without the nerve damage. We then had to begin to treat both sides of her face so that her facial muscles were balanced and symmetrical. When we enter a healthcare career, we call it a practice. I have found this to be very true. Our interaction with patients is a practice, and we never know when we will be called to higher levels of knowledge and ability. I am grateful to Ella as a teacher in my practice. It was because of her that I was able to work with and help many other patients with similar problems. The word cure, or cura in Latin, means to take care, to be careful, and to manage an existing condition. It does not mean miracle. Cure, or to be cured, denotes work and effort on one's own part. When I can reach a point with a patient where I have guided them towards self-empowerment and self-care, like in the case of Ella, I consider the patient cured. This has been your narrator, Chrissy Dawn, and it has been my privilege to share Ella's story with you. I hope that you will continue to listen to our lectures from the Academy series. Until next time, stay healthy.